You are listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. Thank you for downloading and subscribing. Coming to you virtually live from high atop the historic Raleigh building in beautiful downtown Raleigh. The NCF&B takes the listener behind the scenes to tell the stories of the people that contribute to the creation of the food and beverage community of North Carolina. And now, the misfits in the dish pit, the faces of the front. They are Max Trujillo and Matthew Weiss. Hello, and thank you for listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. I am your co-host, Max Trujillo. And I am your co-host, Matthew Weiss. And we are getting mythological on the podcast today. To brew and where to brew, that is the question. We have the Great Dane and owner, Chris Jorensen of Norse Brewing Company out there in Wake Forest, and his noble partner and brewer, second time on the pod, return guest, Brewer Brad Wynn. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us, guys. Welcome to the studio. It's always nice to see a couple of faces. I mean, don't get me wrong, Zoom. You guys are cool to do Zoom calls, but in person is, I think, the way the way it is. And uh, and if you weren't in person, your beer also wouldn't have been in person, and so that would have all been very challenging. Mm. But instead, <laughs> you are here, and you brought delicious well, cold frothy beer. They could have sent beer to our house. Well, yeah. I mean, if we were on Zoom still. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> a little more. <laughs> coordinating yeah a little bit more get that That's delivery service point shit no matter what <laughs> uh so with that let's say uh hello and uh, what do we say in uh, the scandinavian countries when we toast skull skull skull, skull. skull. all right mm. and that is a delicious wit beer is that correct correct what are we drinking exactly brad so um i make wits everywhere i go because i love orange peel coriander and that that um, Belgian ale yeast just makes a really nice summery beer. I love this style. Yeah, that is perfect for the hundred degree weather that yeah, is outside is. right now. Uh, so, a little backstory uh, to give some reference. As Matt noted, that Brad has been on the show before. The specific episode would have been in reference to the Y Hill Kitchen and Brewing episode because Brad was our noble opening brewer uh, during that time when you were uh, you were at Boylan Bridge and when the Borison team and the Abernathy team came in and, and took over. You stayed on and then helped grow and create what is now Y Hill Kitchen and Brewing. Love that place. Which is fantastic. And it then uh, I remember the conversation. I guess like uh, the plan was always that you were going to do this, to go work with your good buddy Chris. But I didn't know because you know, no one tells me anything. <laughs> and I remember getting that punch in the gut of, uh, just so you know, uh, I will be leaving at the end of uh, the month or something. And I'm like, what? <laughs> What's happening? And you're like, um, I'm opening a new brewery in Wake Forest. Uh, it's all good. You know, it's all fine. This is all above board. We, this is the plan from the beginning. I'm like, <gasps> what? And then I just thought, like, I had like a Kenny Rogers through the years montage of all the times we had. <laughs> that just happens real fast. And then... It was fun. It was a great place to build. And I put a good guy in place for you. Greg, oh, yeah. Greg's a hell of a brewer, man. Greg is fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's a, that's a great way. I love that now this is just expanding the chapters of of the story that is told in this you know community because we have a new chapter to talk about which is Norse brewing. So as Matt said, it's in Wake Forest. Maybe uh let's talk about that. Why why'd you go to Wake Forest? What's going on up there? Well that's our backyard. We we live there like five minutes for Brad, eight minutes for me to get there. It's we we found the building, we walked in, my wife and I, Jenny, and uh we just looked just took one look around and she came up to me and like she's like five eight and she looked straight up at me and pointed at me and said, If you lose this, you're in trouble. <laughs> right. So I'm like, so so the scene was set, this is this is our place, and it's perfect. You know, brick building, it's about twenty five years old, a former Italian restaurant. It'll sustain a hurricane at you know high force winds. Um, nothing downstairs. We had to completely um, you know build up the downstairs. It was just a walkout basement filled with dirt, and um, it's just what the Vikings did, right? It was like all stone, metal, and wood. That's how they built their buildings. That's how they built their boats. Their everything that that how they lived, and it just fit very nicely into our theme and what we wanted to do. So. Perfect. I mean, it's one of those things. It lands in your lap, and you go, "Holy crap!" Meaning, we have to do this. It can't. 
it can't get any better than this. And but you were looking to do a brewery, though. It wasn't like you were just randomly shopping for buildings. Well, I wasn't looking at doing a brewery until Brad told me to. So, oh. yeah. Do you do everything that Brad says? <laughs> no, no. I learned. I learned my lesson. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's alive, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. well, true. I do love how you reference that your wife is five eight and she was looking up at you. That definitely indicates right there. Uh, Chris is not a, a, a slight build man. <laughs> he, he's a, and th- and he's also not putting on a fake accent. That is a genuine uh, Danish accent. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, I can't get rid of this. It's it's here forever. Yeah. yeah. So you are kind of the that lineage of the old uh, Viking kind of. Uh, uh, heritage is that kind of a, a yeah. way to say it? <laughs> so, well, that's what the uh, what is that twenty three and Me says. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty undeniable. I don't think you needed twenty three and Me to tell you that you one. Need to check. Well, yeah. we have to get tested once in a while just to make sure you're right. But um, by the least... way, this podcast is not brought to you by twenty three and Me. No, <laughs> not yet. No, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Send all your emails to Matt at yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you're interested. <laughs> no, so yeah, born and raised in Denmark. Um, I've I've now lived in the states most of my life became a citizen of what about 10 years ago and love it this is home Uh, this is where we want to stay it's where our family is our kids are born here um and what brought you here and why north carolina um well my wife brought me here i met her in high school i was an exchange student so it's one of those things you see on movies yeah Mm, but don't really happen in real life so high school sweethearts (laughs) yeah were so, you like the you know you were like the new foreign exchange student? Did you have long blonde hair at the time? And was uh, I did have a, I did have a nice mullet. Yes. And oh, your nickname yeah. and his nickname uh, was sweet. definitely Sven. <laughs> Some yeah. great pictures. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Brad has seen the pictures. Great it's all pictures. Good. But yeah, so we met in California, where my wife's from, um, and then we moved around to Seattle, Connecticut, um, Virginia, and now here. And that's all through work, just corporate jobs I've had. Came here, met Brad about 15 years ago. Yeah, something like that. Um, and uh, we hung out. I I I like beer quite a bit. Well, it's a, it's a Scandinavian trait, I think. <laughs> yeah, that and snops. So and pickled hearings. But um, he didn't have snops or pickled hearings, so I stuck with the beer. <laughs> and uh, one night we were sitting on uh, our back back uh, deck, and um, uh, we were. Brad came over around three o'clock. He had just uh, done some uh, nice beer. He had bottled a bourbon barrel tavern ale. I love that beer, and um, that's a good one. He brought over a six pack or two. Yeah, and uh, by six that o'clock, was go- yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say that was gone by like three forty-five. Well, didn't have, <laughs> yeah. didn't no, have a chance. I think I think by six o'clock we had already opened a bottle of Basil Hayden, and uh, we were done with the beer, and we threw some steaks on the grill, and we kept talking. And a little later at night, uh, Lynn, his wife, and Jenny. Uh, joined us and uh, we sat and talked and, and we opened another bottle of basil another, basil another bottle of basil <laughs> Hayden. and uh, uh, the girls were drinking wine and they they can hold their own when it comes to number of bottles oh, they're good. so uh, i think it was like around one one thirty something like that we sit and talking about what do we want to do kind of when we grow up and, yeah you know brad has always wanted to do something like a brew pup uh, so we talked about that I've always, at some point in time when our kids were through college, my plan was to get out of the corporate job and stop traveling so much, and and it would just be Jenny and the dogs and I. I could do whatever I want, consulting job, who knows, mow lawns. But uh, then Brad goes, well, why don't you just uh, build me a brewery? Mm. And Jenny's like, okay. Yeah. All right. And, and then uh, they, call, they call their daughter, come pick him up, uh, because they're responsible like that. And uh, got home. Next morning, we woke up. Jenny and I looked at each other. And she goes, did we just agree to uh, build a brewery? And I said, I think we did. And she goes, uh, should we? And I'm like, well, you know, why not? And we, we, we like, she likes people. I mean, not that I don't like people, but I like drinking nice <laughs> along much. with people. But... Um, <laughs> So, uh, it, it, yeah, so that's how it started. And that was, what, now th- almost, what was that, a little over three years ago? Yeah. So. And so how much longer after that did it take you to actually look for the building? Well, we, we started looking at breweries that already exist. Okay. Or existed. I mean, so we looked at about 11 breweries ranging from kind of the, the North Charlotte area all the way out to the coast. It's amazing when you start asking questions, everything is for sale. Yeah. Right? But right. The, meaning the numbers yeah. just didn't add up. And we knew we wanted a retail place. Most of the breweries around here are all, you know, distribution breweries. So the the model itself would have to be changed significantly. Mm-hmm. The equipment that they had at that point, I mean, a lot of them was it was very old. We had to do a lot of upgrading to the equipment. So um, we actually looked at a building to lease um, down here off of Glenwood. Um, and I got on the phone with, uh, with my attorney and, and good friend. And I told him about this building and the the amount of money that we would need to, you know, put up to get the lease. 
And uh, he goes, are you an effing idiot? <laughs> you know, do you know what you could do with that money? I mean, you can buy your own building and you can pretty much build this thing, you know. To spec. Yeah, exactly the way yeah. you want it. Yeah. And you would own the land, right? He said, that's... He, so I'm like, well, that was the kick in the butt that I needed. That's a good perspective to have. Right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's why I love him. <laughs> uh, Lawyers so. every now what, and then. We're going to need that lawyer's number yeah. uh, after that just yeah. for future references. Yeah, well, <laughs> it also takes a certain bank account to be able to buy your own building. So uh, everything is... Oh, uh, that again. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, he mowed a lot of lawns. He, he mowed exactly. a lot of lawns. Yeah. He's gotten really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> are you still doing your corporate job? Or yes, you, I am. You are? Yes, I am. Okay. So uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm lucky. I mean, uh, I I work in the farmer industry. Okay. So um, there's this whole COVID world. Um, everybody's moving home, working from home. Yeah. Um, and uh, my job is is what we do. The company I work for, it's booming. It's it's doing great. We we got a lot. Have of, you found a vaccine yet? Is it they work on a vaccine? <laughs> or what? Yeah, uh, we <laughs> we, we work we work it's with clients that that are doing that. Yeah. So yeah. um so that that's great. I mean that's a good feeling in and of itself, right? To do something good for 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 humanity in general. So yeah. you know, Chris, it just uh, and Max, you, you know this. Like it just speaks to that you're obviously intelligent because everybody in the wine business that we talked to and if you remember uh when we had roy cloud and mike daniels from vintage 59 you know we i I kept asking them about the business aspect of wine and they said you know matt basically if we wanted to make money we would have gone into pharma you know but you're kind of doing it backwards you (laughs) made you made your money in pharma and now you're doing a brewery see yeah that's the way to do it you gotta have fun with that money (laughs) oh yeah i I think we're having a lot of fun and it's great it's been great since we opened our doors except for that little you know what was it like six uh nine week stint where we had to close down or whatever that was that sure. was that was a little that kind of sucked oh yeah that part but, yeah <laughs> but uh so you know. being that because you opened in with december of last year is yeah, that december right? 19 yeah um so it's a it's a large facility as you've already mentioned i mean you, brad you were saying five thousand square feet on each floor it's two floors we got right? 8500 square feet total so yeah wow. okay and then so close, and a big yeah. outdoor uh, yeah, beer and, garden as well. So, correct. So you have a lot of space, which is conducive to the normal climate of, or the the current climate of what's going on right now, uh, as far as being able to go out and all. But um, but being that you were able to kind of build to spec, as Matt said, uh, we didn't we can't anticipate that there was going to be a, a pandemic at no. the time. But by just by virtue of the the space, it has kind of worked in this new modern business plan. I would I'd venture to say like. People are, are, are comfortable going out because they can actually enjoy your beer outside uh, at a safe distance and kind of go from there. Is that, yeah. Would that be fair? So we, we have we have a nice uh, front porch where um, we took out half the tables, right? So you have your – we actually have eight feet between uh, our tables. You know, you've got to be able to move your chair in and out, right? Yeah. So, and, uh, so people love that a lot um, because it does – you know, being outside, a little different safety factor than – being inside yeah right we have a nice deck in the back about a 550 square foot deck out in the back coming off the the upper level of the building right behind the brewery yeah right behind it and then we have down in the parking lot a 1500 square foot tent so all in all when we we are less than 50 percent seating capacity inside because we had to also meet the six foot standard um so but by having the outside seating and being able to put that tent up in our own parking lot benefits of owning your own, own land right yeah. we were able to only lose uh, 20 20 tabletops so so that was you know that's really good and people love it we, yeah. we we have people or guests coming in they're like oh my god i'm so worried about this i don't my i me and my husband we we're afraid of it we don't want to be but we want to go out and we heard good things about norse they'll call us up and and uh, Jenny or Lynn or Jeannie or um, evil twin, my wife's uh, sister, twin <laughs> sister, um, she uh, they they will put them down in the corner of the tent, right? So there's a fan down there, a nice little table. They're sitting away from everybody else, and every people that are, that have those you know needs and wants, we we, we can oblige that. It's it's That's it's cool. good. Uh, let me take a quick break just to talk about one of our sponsors of the show. That is uh, Folks Foundation, uh, a five hundred one c three nonprofit that. Uh, is there to be champions for all good things crafted in North Carolina and the folks that make them, uh, whether it's supporting our podcast or their general store that they're they're going to open soon, or even their new 
uh, North Carolina related cocktail bar called Tonic uh, Folks Foundation is always doing something to support artisans in North Carolina. Uh, they recently created a compilation vinyl album called the, Quarant- the Carolina Quarantine Project, where Carolina based musicians and duos showcase songs that were written while sheltered in place. Their album is on sale already. It's on their website. You can go to folksfoundation.org and purchase the Carolina Quarantine Project. Know that all of the sales go directly to the artists that supported it. So you are helping to push forward the artistic movement in North Carolina by supporting the Folks Foundation and read the Folks Journal that comes out quarterly. It's fantastic. Yeah. And we should also mention that... uh, Welcome back. Welcome back to Hungry Harvest. (laughs) That's right. Hungry Harvest. Save a trip to the store and get fresh farm produce, kitchen staples, and pantry items delivered right to your doorstep starting at just $15. Yeah, Hungry Harvest creates weekly variety boxes of healthy produce, packs them up in their facility right here in the Triangle so they make no contact deliveries directly to your door with their team of local drivers. Yeah, and not only is it affordable and convenient, it's a convenient way to keep yourself stocked up on healthy foods. It's a great way to make a difference with your grocery dollars. Because every time you receive a harvest, you're contributing to fight against food waste and hunger in our community. Every delivery saves at least 10 pounds of food from going to waste and supports the work of local hunger-solving organizations like Interfaith Food Shuttle with their produce donations. When you sign up, your participation also helps others that would like to have some great, fresh, healthy food as well. So sign up at HungryHarvest.net. Don't forget to use the promo code NCFB30 for 30% off your first harvest. That's HungryHarvest.net. All right, gents. Let's get into beer. And uh, so let's try another one first. But tell me, I always want to know what's like the the style and the signature beer. If you had to explain Norse brewing company in one beer like what would be the the signature beer that you would that you would give somebody um i don't know if it'd be a single beer um it's like picking your favorite child that's, yeah that, i can't oh, do well, that we all have I, I, yeah, we I, know, I want to know who that is everybody yeah. has everybody one has but you can't them. say yeah. it i mean <laughs> you know yeah. that um no what we do is really solid beers so yeah. if you're going to come up and get a wit beer if you're going to come and get a danish style lager which we're getting ready to make also um, then you're going to get one that you recognize, and hopefully it's the best that you've had in a long time. Uh, I brought a brown ale with me. I was kind of known for that at a brewery I was at before, and I just I made I this. That. I just made this one bigger and better. So, um, so this is a brown ale we're drinking now. No, not yet. Uh, oh, okay. I think Chris is pouring a Hefeweizen, so okay. we went from a wit to Hefeweizen. Um, I've also brought a English style brown ale, and I brought a West Coast IPA. So I don't know, I think, I pretend like I know something about beer, but I actually, I humbly do not know shit about beer. I just know the names. What is really the difference between a wit and a Hefeweizen? Because aren't they both wheat beers? It, they are. Um, and a wit usually has unmalted wheat, and it also uses Belgian ale a yeast instead of a Hefeweizen. is going to use a German ale yeast. Okay. Um, so they lend very different flavors. They are similar, but they're different. They, um, they're they kind of same family flavor. Yeah. Um, and then a Hefeweizen usually does not have orange peel or coriander. Um, which you know was kind of made famous by Pierre Salas. He's a little coriander in his wit beer, and um, it just you know uh, it really sets it apart. Half of you're going to see is very clovey, and there's oh, yeah. a, there's just a real you know the esters are what give it the flavor, the interesting flavors. So yeah, there's always like a little. Different. There's almost I found like in Hefeweizens there's always like a somewhat of a tropical note a little bit of fruit tropical always. like banana you and bet. that's from the esters definitely right? a little yeah. banana in this one yeah cool that's fantastic yeah. thank like, you refreshing this yeah. is the type of beer you want right now yeah. totally. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Brad was throwing down some pretty awesome. Uh, there was the mango hefeweizen that you were the doing. The mango, I love that beer. Which uh, Greg has uh, humbly tried to recreate. That's good. Yeah, because it was one of those things. It's like, okay, you get a new brewer in, uh, just like you know, a new chef comes in. They want to like do their own menu. They want to do whatever. But gotta it, put your own spin on it. But you gotta like also preserve the the brand in itself. And you know, opening up at Y Hill, we had that mango hefeweizen, and everybody loved it. And it's yeah, like, well, big seller. So then it's like I, I think it's cool that Greg looked at it as a challenge. It's like okay, I can't do exactly what Brad did. I have to do what Greg's gonna do. 
but I also can't make it so avant-garde weird that it doesn't taste like the original version. So I think he's doing a good job. But man, this is tremendous. Thank you very much. The yeast does all the work. So, <laughs> what, yeah, right. so well, what? I actually see Brad working when I do go into the brewery sometimes. So. Oh, man, you do? Yeah, I, I do. I, 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 see that. I know. I know. <laughs> this old yeah. man can huff it around. So. <laughs> yeah. What? What is the yeast that you use? So um, a brewery that's pretty famous for its vine stuff, and I, I was really lucky. Uh, when I got into brewing, uh, my first brewery, um, brewmasters there were not um, really in touch and uh, kind of learned at school in Chicago. And then my second um, job, I got to learn from um, a German brewmaster, and I got to spend a few months with him. And he primarily made two beers all his life. He made Hefeweizen. Uh, he made a Dunkelhef, and he made a regular Hefeweizen. And, and he got pretty good at it because 30-some year German master brewer. And I was lucky enough to work with him. He taught me how to make lagers, taught me how to make some ales. And uh, he worked at Weinsteffen also. So he was a consulting brewer for them. And um, he turned me on to this yeast, and I still use the same yeast, and I ferment the same way he did, and I make my mash the same way he did, because it all makes a difference, and it lends the flavor profile that you get. It's not, you know, everybody's like, oh, Hefeweizen's easy. It's not easy. Um, it's it's actually a, a, a beer that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, especially in the mash and the fermentation. So, do you do you buy that yeast, or do you cultivate it at the at the brewery? Or I'm buying everything now. Okay, um, I don't really have a lab just yet i was actually looking at microscopes yesterday i mean i have a ph meter <laughs> and some things and um I'm, I'm running blind as far as yeast goes so i'm pitching fresh yeast i'll pitch one or two off of a beer that i've already made um but without being able to look at it under a microscope i don't feel comfortable so we're yeah. not streaking anything up right now Right on. We but, will. But that's cool that you can get the ex that you can still get the exact same yeast that it's this German brewmaster is doing. Okay. That. Yeah, it's it's a very widely used. You just gotcha. have to know how to use it. Yeah. Gotcha. You know, I uh, I watched recently just because I'm a big fan of beer and uh, I'm a big fan of stone brewing ale. I watched uh, the Beer Jesus documentary, which I don't know if you guys had seen that. It's streaming on Netflix. You guys could watch. <laughs> uh, but it's the stone brewing CEO Greg. Coke is it? Yeah, yeah. Is that his last name? Coke, uh, K O C H. Or Cook, yeah, I'm not uh, sure. Cook, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So, but his whole thing was that he's an American going to Germany to create stone brewing company in Germany, which is kind of like in Berlin. How dare you? Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. like how, how dare you do that? But, but in reverse, you're kind of doing. Uh, you know, obviously it's not German, but but like you're taking these Northern European stylings and coming to America and kind of holding true with that and trying to kind of have a old world sensibility with your flavors in an area, especially in North Carolina, which is widely now recognized for great local brew. Um, but I, I, I love that because initially when I first moved from California to North Carolina and I singularly thought about the, the beer, I'd said to my wife, I'm like, you know, the beer is all really good, but it's similar to itself. Like most of the breweries I feel like they're using all the same ingredients, and so there's the the variety isn't as wide as like what i what I knew in California like there's some very dynamic breweries coming out in in California that was seven years ago though, and things have upgraded and changed through that time so now like you could go to Norse and get a style of beer that is not similar to say you know some of the local the local guys in the area that are doing great beer as well, and I applaud you for that because. Everyone tries to do something a certain way, and then you find that you're like, oh, we're all just kind of doing the same thing with just a little lilt of a change. But this is nice because, I don't know, maybe in your words rather than mine, how would you explain the difference between like an old world sensibility of beer to what we consider like a American um, craft beer? Well, like I said, that um, the guy's name was Franz Beck. Franz made two beers all his life, <laughs> and that's just um, and that was it. And we, like, I was in Berlin. I was I didn't get to Stone, but uh, I got to some really great breweries and some great brew pubs. And those guys, there's a lot of young brewers that are doing what we're doing here now, and they thank us. I, I'm, I'll be honest, uh, because we revived styles. I, you know, I'm in Berlin, but it was hard to get a Berliner Weiss, so you can get that here in North Carolina, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. a lot of places, including my. So, um, you know, we, we do whatever we want. <laughs> for God's sakes, we're Americans. So, you know, um, and it makes it, it makes it good for us, though. Um, again, I had a, another friend of mine uh, who I worked with. He came here from Germany. Now, he had American parents, but he grew up in Germany. And, 
you know, he's going to run a filter all his life at Augustina Brow or something, and he just was not up for that. So he came here to have fun, make great beer, and, you know, get in on what we're doing. And um, when I first started brewing, um, I would, I, I don't know if I was being looked down upon, but they're like, uh, you know, the Germans and the English, I had another English brewmaster friend of mine now who was like, well, you know, Americans do all the same stuff. It's just, you know, it, it's going to be a strong beer and it's, you know, over the top and it's not true. Uh, we make, I think the best lagers in the world. We make the best everything in the world. And we just, because we can do and use whatever we want. There's no limitations, no nothing. I take a lot of, um, you know, um, creative license from friends of mine. Uh, I love seeing what they're doing. I love going to breweries, and you know, there's some great ones around here too. Yeah. Um, there's just such good breweries uh, within a you know short distance of Raleigh. It's fantastic. and in Raleigh, some great breweries. Well, it's like you know, if you grew up with a very strong, long heritage of family with generations upon generations. You would have this uh, tradition, and, and regardless of making beer or, or anything in your life, just even just your own uh, way of life, you have guidance because you've had your forefathers and mothers before you that kind of just said, like, this is the way it's going to be. But Americans are kind of like orphans, and so we're learning all of our mistakes as we do it, but in the end, we're all kind of doing the same thing, but it's just like, hey, look what I just figured out. As opposed to the Europeans going, yeah, yeah, we've been doing that for four years. And we learn from the Europeans. Right. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm doing uh, lagers the way that I was taught to do lagers. When I, and I was taught by a German brewmaster. So yeah. I take a lot of what he taught me, and I keep that. I do, I've made some changes along the way. I mean, you have to learn and, and get better every day. But uh, a lot of tradition is stemmed from there, stems from these European traditions. So, But I'd like to know Chris's point of view on that, being that you are from Europe, from Denmark and all, and... You grew up drinking beer in a certain styling. How have you adapted to American beers, and where does that fit with Norse? Uh, first off, I think I've adapted pretty well. Um, <laughs> it's, it's doing a hell of a job. <laughs> it's, uh, my my uh, untapped account tells me so. Um, but... Uh, Again, yeah, I know I shouldn't be plugging that in, but I did anyway. No, no, please. <laughs> Not a sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, I... so. You know, growing up in Denmark, first of all, the, you're supposed to be 18 when you drink, but you start a lot earlier, and it's typical. You sit around the, you know, the, the family table, and you have your, you know, big um, cold table, the store kalibor, right, where you get all of your different meals and your different. I mean, you go through basically a, a three to four hour course of like eight or ten different like meals all sitting in one a lot of beer a lot of snaps and it's all lager and pilsners yeah uh, you get into the into the seasonality meaning you get into the christmas season gets a little colder you get you, porters uh is that's those are some good ones in there as well and then you got the christmas beers but for me it was all always tuborg or carlsberg that yeah. was that was that was it it's kind of um that was that was those were the big ones nowadays when i go back there are a lot of like smaller craft brews and you can get those um and it, it's popping up more and more my cousin uh, who came and visited us for the first time a couple of years ago um he's like he ever since he goes out to every single craft brew you can find in denmark because we took him around to a couple of places over here and he got hooked mm. um and and he will so send me texts and go hey i had this porter with a little bit of licorice in it like salt licorice and it. it was really good right yeah um so i think e- even even denmark you know, my, my home grounds are, are kind of adapting to people wanting something different and not just the same two styles of Hefeweizen or lagers or Pilsners, right? So it, I think overall, and I travel throughout the world, uh, it, it's, it's changing the beer. The beer industry is changing across the world because people want something more exciting. And a lot of people want IPAs. And so I, I have a, a buddy of mine um, that I work with who lives in, he, he's Danish, but lived in Munich for a while. And every time I would go over and, and, and work in Munich, I would stay with him and his family. And he's like, oh, can you just, just bring some IPAs over? Because I can't get them over here. And he's a huge fan. And now they're starting to actually have them. And last time I went, you know, he's back in Copenhagen. Last time I went over there, we went out to a couple of breweries in Copenhagen and uh, had some pretty good IPAs. Yeah. Uh, so, Which is funny because I, I almost feel like Americans have adopted IPAs as their own, which obviously, if you know, like the history of the name IPA it was based in Europe, from England more. It right? is, yeah. In the Appel Elm. For, the, for the, well, the whole travel of... Yeah, yeah, they had to hop the heck out of it so it would last the yeah, trip. So, yeah. but, it wouldn't go a, bad by the time yeah. they got to India, yeah. Which but, was really yeah. just a funny excuse to just make higher octane beer. 
It's like, uh, I'm going to need this to be a little bit higher. <laughs> well, because... More alcohol, more hops. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, that, I wanted to get into that for a second because Copenhagen is like now considered one of the food destinations of the world. And so that would make me think, oh, yeah, there's probably some radical stuff going on there in all types of culinary aspects from food to brewing and stuff like that do you do you get a chance to eat in copenhagen a lot i do uh, yeah I, that's why i try to stay when i go and right uh, and so but so they say there's an old meat market that has like uh, it's just a bunch of restaurants um in an old just old meat packing plant uh, on on the harbor and uh, they now put in some breweries in there and so i, I go there and, and hang out you can kind of say okay i want a sandwich here and then i want a hot dog here i want a steak over here and each one has different beers Either they bring in, they're, they're buying from elsewhere, or they brew themselves. So mm. uh, it, it is really, um, it, it, I love Copenhagen. It's great. Um, um, that's the place to go if you're in Denmark. Yeah. Uh, everything else is pretty much the country. And Noma? Every, Have you been to Noma? I've not been to Noma, but I did read an article on them that they changed and now be a burger place. So so <laughs> during during the COVID times, everybody could afford to eat there. So we were just talking about that on a, uh, last week's podcast about how burgers are pandemic friendly and yeah, yeah, yeah. really working know. there. Chris over at uh, Postmaster might have a lawsuit uh, that he could file against Noma. You hear that? <laughs> For like, burgers. Government cheeseburger. We thought of it first, Noma. <laughs> be an interesting uh, international lawsuit, but uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it'll go far. But uh, he can try. We love our food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what's the uh, what? What's the food situation over at Norse? What do we? talking about um we so the menu we set out to do was like nordic food but with a southern flair um so uh, we still have a fryer even though i tried to get rid of it um but uh, People i think love their french fries oh yeah oh yeah and we got we got some pretty good french <laughs> fries i must good. i must yeah. have to admit that but it's very much we so we try to take um kind of the, the danish style uh mix in some uh some california thinking right especially with the sourdough that we get from union special meaning andrew makes just killer bread yeah. um and so if we got open face sandwiches uh, our smurble which is what it's called in danish and um so so those are going very well we got some some pretty good salads where you can also take the same fixings as what you have like the shrimp salad on the smurf or the egg salad or chicken salad you can put that on top of your like norwegian blue salad or wedge salad whatever so we mm. you can mix it up yeah and and you 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 still have it's a lot of the recipes or some of the recipes are from you know my my grandma yeah so we got our fregadilla which are danish meatballs with a goat cheese gravy and lingonberry jam on them and they're really popular of course we got a, a pretzel uh, and we make our own beer cheese with the brat's delicious beer and uh, you know people would if, if we gave people a straw <laughs> that would just live off of the beer cheese <laughs> um and then I think the, the, the best seller that we have is actually the Viking burger. So um, we, we have a burger that's a blend of four different meats. It's Wagyu beef, it's elk, it's boar, and it's bison. Mm-hmm. Whoa. And you put those things together. Oh boy, it's really I mean, good. it is it Sounds is really awesome. good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's lean. I imagine it's not like super it actually fatty. It, it is. is. Yeah, yeah, you got to know how to cook it. It's there's a lot to it. It's yeah. it's a great sandwich. It really is. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. So who's heading that up and what's going on there? Like who who's in charge of all the, the food? We've got a guy uh, Tim Weber and his buddy Drew. Um, they're. Uh, you know, when we got started, we learned a lot. <laughs> We're not restaurant people. Uh, but I did learn a lot at White Hill, I will say. Um, watching you set that up and, and Bobby and then getting Kyle in and Kevin, I yeah. was I, I was impressed. It was really cool. And I hung out a lot around you guys. I hung out a lot in the kitchen um, because the food was Easy, fantastic, Brad. too. Max's- uh, NCF and B hats are not going to fit very well anymore. Well, so just let's take it I easy a little bit. A hat. I do need a hat. <laughs> no, I know how good anyway, I yeah, uh, but no, I, I said them why. Well, so. I love restaurants, and it's not the only person I learned from. I've been around them a lot, oh, right. uh, all my life. Yeah, um, I came in with a lot of food knowledge. Um, but uh, and because look at me, I, I love to eat. Um, but uh, we uh, um, we so we got started. It didn't go as well as I had hoped, and uh, we we're quick to make changes if we need to. Um, we're not going to. Uh, just flow well, around. Not everyone expects to eat at a at a, mm. like a beer garden, right? and a lot of people come in and go, "Didn't know you had a restaurant." Right. Um, so that's our marketing problem. But uh, 
I'm proud of our food. It is so good right now, and our kitchen is just killing it. And you know, I've got some guys that are very humble, um, and um, they, you know, we, 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 I love our menu. It's really different. I did not want to come in and just do another brew pub, you know, with sports on the televisions. That's just boring to me. Um, I want an atmosphere, and atmosphere, you know, atmosphere is everything. So we are all about comfort. You know, we're beer family. Food is so important to us, um, and I think people come in and I want to exceed your expectations. Everybody does, but the main thing I want to exceed is I want to make you comfortable. I want to make sure you come in, sit down and go, you know, feel familiar and family and just, you know, that was good. And that's where our food kind of landed. And I did not want to be a burger place, but guess what? I'm doing burgers and fries a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, but, and it's okay. Uh, ours are really good. And I have elk sausage and, you know, we try to do some gamey stuff and, um, you know, I, I fucking plug a friend, uh, B&W Hardware just gave us some smokers and we're, uh, smoking our own, you know, uh, pork belly and we put that in a lot of the dishes oh, wow. and it, it's great. It's really good food. They, they've really got a handle on it. They're barbecuing and, and smoking and doing some great stuff. And I got a big grill, big, beautiful grill. Chris bought us when we first got started and we inherited pizza ovens and we have a great kitchen. It's really cool. That's Sounds pretty awesome. It Sounds it like you awesome. Have you got to come check it out. Yeah, absolutely. And so, as far as uh, back to the business side of things, and I'm always, I think Max and I are both always intrigued by this. Like, so you said in the beginning, your intention was to do retail, meaning that you do not want your beers in distribution, or you'll do that, but that's not your main focus. Um, eventually, we'll probably get into to that. Uh, I think in uh, when, when you kind of look at at how breweries are set up, they serve a certain local market, mm -hmm. right? That's where your regulars come from. And and one of the things that we are learning now is we, well, I think we had like we opened like three days. We already had regulars, so that was that was a great that was great. <laughs> First right? three days, they, they'd been there six times in three days, right? It's amazing. Lunch dinner, lunch dinner, lunch it, dinner. So it is crazy, <laughs> but um, so but in a great way. Oh yeah, it, it was it was awesome. Uh, still is. Um, but so so for us, we kind of looked at we sh we should be able to draw from within a ten mile radius of where we are, and people further away are only going to come once a week, maybe once every two weeks. But people closer are going to come closer, you know, every two days, something like that. So we are seeing that. Um, so if we 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 will eventually start getting into um, like bottle shops or other restaurants, but kind of out in that ten mile perimeter yeah so that'll help us extend a little further out so people come into a bottle shop or they come into a restaurant they have our beer and they go oh this is really good and they look up Norse Brewing Company they'll come up because we we want to become a destination right and we are seeing that that's happening people will come up they'll bring their dogs they'll you know walk around downtown Wake Forest they'll end up with us and they'll just sit around for you know two three four hours we had people come in at 11 30 Sunday they didn't leave until 7 30 Right, and there was a group of six that just sat there all day, grazed throughout the day, Squatters. ate food. They, they yeah. had two meals. It was great. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was amazing. Just, right, yeah. and and people right. come back and eat lunch yeah. and then dinner, so it's so, not terrible. So, so, that. so that's kind of what that's what we wanted to create. And, yeah. And if if we go, if somebody comes and says, "Hey, I want to buy you know twenty thousand barrels of whatever uh, a year from you," we'll certainly look at it. We can't produce it out of the place we got now, but right. meaning it, it if a business opportunity presents itself, we will of course look at it. But if not, that's a sustainable business just within the ten mile radius focus and getting enough people based on what you. I mean, obviously in a non pandemic global pandemic world. Oh, yeah. well, that kind of kind of puts <laughs> a little chink in the armor. And as a uh, single location, yes. Okay. Um, we're actually doing really well. We started out unbelievably well. This, um, you know, the virus uh, sucks. It sucks for all of us. Um, uh, we're in a lot better shape than a lot of friends are. So um, we are very lucky. Um, we opened back up uh, when we had the opportunity. We trying to keep it as safe and clean and sanitized as possible. But, you know, we're restaurant people. Chris is a farming industry. And it's nothing really new for us. You know, I've been washing my hands all my life. So... Um, <laughs> It's right, as something. a brewer, <laughs> you have to keep your yeah. facility And I clean. like yeah. food, and yeah. So I've been in the food industry for a long time, so yeah. uh, washing hands is a big deal. Um, but uh, it, it, we've been really lucky, and we we know that, and we're very appreciative of that. I have a lot of friends that are not so lucky right now, and I'm hoping they make it because there's some really great people. You know this industry brings in amazing people. It is just great from... Food, beer, wine, alcohol, the liquor part of it. We have it all. I love everybody. It's just so cool. And to see, you know, the struggles right now is kind of tough. So yeah. I'm hoping we get through this stuff. And I mean, not to be like totally off subject, but current events, Matt 
texted me the the storyline last night that uh, Danny Meyer and all of his restaurants. It's it's a not that you guys would know, but we've been talking about this on the show for these past few episodes about uh, how employees get paid and and is it fair and what's the dis- distribution of wealth inside the the business and Danny Meyer restaurants I guess he decided d- to do away officially with the no tipping aspect and go back to the more conventional way I've been seeing that where he is you know just just pricing out his menu accordingly and then relying on the generosity of their guests to tip and basically fund their employees and uh, in the article he had said he's like well right now it, it, they're so um People are tipping very generously. Yeah, there's basically there's money being left on the table if we didn't ask for, for, for the gratuity to come through. And because of this erratic amount of flow of business, like you just don't know. Tomorrow, everybody could just stay home, and then the next day, there could That's be an outpouring true. of people. So almost like you got to get it when, it, when it's there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's crazy because we look to guys like him uh, as leaders in this industry. And when they're even like, man, we got to we got to rethink this again. (laughs) And uh, it is weird, though. And just like you're talking about the hamburgers and talking about just whatever. I feel like everybody goes back to the the most basic of all things. And those are the things that uh, that do well when there is chaos out there. Right. And so. A hamburger, a beer, it's true. Pizza, yeah. barbecue, Meatloaf, you bet. These are all the things that, like, we've noticed through the analysis of of, of interviewing people through the, this pandemic. That those are the businesses that tend to do well, mm-hmm. and uh, and also where people feel comfortable. You know, it's like, yeah, I can, I can, I've always gotten my pizza delivered. You know, or I've always been able to go to a place and grab a burger, and um, you know, and you're gonna, <laughs> you're not gonna pull that pint of beer out of my cold dead hands. No way. <laughs> you know? It's so, a comfort thing. You bet. We're all about it, man. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I, not, I don't. We haven't talked about this, or whatever. So I'm not putting you guys on the spot, but are, have, are you guys doing more of a traditional method as far as like staffing and 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 labor model and all is it just what you would kind of expect and, and are the servers and the staff being compensated fairly and all i i think it's good actually um so uh, you know there's competition everywhere and there's competition for our employees also yeah we haven't really lost anybody um and um they know what's out there some of them are working at other places you know how that goes and you know they need two or three jobs especially right now so um i think um you know it's our customers and our guests really that are are the driving force so they're the ones that are keeping our our employees happy as well we yeah. just try to provide a really safe place we try to give them something cool to sell and try to make sure that everybody's comfortable um but um our guests are killing it and it's you know just um i, I love that um danny meyer can do what he's doing and you know he is a trendsetter and has been for some years now probably over 20 years but um you know in certain cities we're in a small city um, we have to go with what the customer wants because um, I don't have a huge pool of people. Right. So that was that, you know, do you want to be a burger and fry place? No. Do I want to be a retail shop? Yes. Especially given the climate, um, uh, you know, try to sell beer at the supermarket right now is not easy. Uh, even though sales have kind of gone up for some people because of this, you know, people want to take some beer home. Um, but uh, sustainably, uh, with the big guys and the way, you know, InBev's kind of pushed everybody to the curb and and bought a lot of big breweries yeah. and you know people like stone are like you know we're not selling and i love that sort of thing you know the independent thing is a big deal for me um but if you do sell way to go you know yeah. make make your money i got no problem with that either my bachelor party at stone brewing company just so you oh, know that's nice. pretty cool three-day yeah. bachelor party <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> north san diego that's pretty yeah. cool <laughs> uh, and greg beer jesus was the guy that gave me gave us the tour he uh when we walked beer out jesus. of the lim- limousine he handed us growlers with uh um, like a like a necktie, like a what do you call like a like a bolo tie, like a press pass. What do you get like when you get a backstage oh, yeah. media pass? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a lanyard, a lanyard. Yeah. He handed us these lanyards with big clips on the bottom, and we're like, "What's this?" He's like, "Oh, it's for this." And he hands us a growler full of the double barrel. Uh, arrogant bastard, That's which is like eighteen percent alcohol because it was like rested in J- Jack Daniel barrels yeah. beers. And he's like, "There you go." And he just handed like the eight of us that come pouring out of the the limousine, which we already had like a beer or two in there, and just clips it onto our lanyard, and we're just hanging like just <laughs> heavy is, beers around our neck. That's net. great. And we just took a tour and did whatever, and pretty amazing. That was back in their first brewery, like the teeny tiny one before yeah. they even moved to Escondido, and then since, and then all the now they're in Virginia. And, and he's yeah, a marketing yeah. guy. 
man. He is good at what he does. That's for sure. Yeah. And they hire good people. So, so with the retail element, you're not you're not canning right now, right? Or no, we're that, not. That's not a yeah. thing. That's you know we've discussed that too. Canning is cool, but canning is expensive, and there's not a lot of profit in canning. So it's more of just a marketing endeavor if you do canning, unless you do it to a, to point. a very yeah, high yeah, level. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah, but you can't casually can. You've got to hit some numbers to make it worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but you can get a, a growler or so to take home. Is that we do something? have growlers. Yeah, I'm not a big fan, but we do definitely have growlers to take Why home. Why is that? What do you, what it's just like a lot it? of waste, and uh, it's not the best way uh, to enjoy a beer. But it works. I, I'm going to be a little bit of a snob right now. Drink it at my bar. That's the place to drink it. <laughs> and we'll get you home. We'll get you an Uber if you need it. But just drink one or two also, uh, and you can get home. Um, and I do a lot of, uh, you know, I do some strong beers. I do some pretty light beers, too. So oh, You just made me think. What we if run like- the gamut. What if, like, with this whole, like, uh, home, like ordering system and all that, what if, like, Uber made a deal with a local brewery or so, and, like, you could just tack on your Uber onto your bill, and you just, and it was yeah. all connected? Because yeah. if you, like, the advantage is if you ordered your Uber through Norse Brewing, you would get a deal on the drive. Well, you know? so we actually tried that. So, you know, you know when you go, again, I, I said earlier, I travel a lot. So when I go to, to larger cities around the world, you'll actually see, like, an Uber sign hanging somewhere. It's like a pickup spot. Yeah. If you go and get picked up there, you get a discount because mm. then all the Uber drivers can hang out yeah, just like the old... helps them. Yeah, just like the old taxi cabs hung out, right? And just in long yeah. rows and waiting for rides. Um, so we contacted Uber and said, hey, what if you put that? We'll put that in front of our building. Put a little sign hanging off our yeah. awning there. And people can just get picked up. And that could be the spot for downtown Wake Forest. Right. I'm like, no, no interest. Not so, yet, at least. Well, not yet. Let's see. We'll, we'll, we'll After f- this episode, they'll be like, oh, oh yeah. We should no, have no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Let's not Uber. And this guy yeah. can build some businesses, so, so. it's got to be a good Back idea. Back to the beer for a second. Yeah. Yeah, what what you just poured is, us something? This is which one's this? That's the Douglas Bunny. He's pouring you an IPA, or he poured us an IPA. So, um, kind of West Coasty. It's got some malt flavor to it. It's got some beautiful American hops. Um, I just I love this beer. So, mm. there's some Amarillo. There's some Belma. There's some really interesting hops in this beer. Um, it gets heavily dry hopped, um, but I try to keep it. I want my, all my beers to be balanced. So there is some malt backbone. A lot of a lot of guys i don't blame them because i like drinking them too but they try to make that you know the the base as light as possible to put sugar in there and keep it as as light as possible i want you to taste malt i want you to taste hops because i think they go yeah. great together i can't you know i can't get away from that malt flavor i love it so and are you working with carolina malts or i do um I, yeah i have them for a little bit i love them um they're that's my favorite maltster right now yeah. um so and the carolina gold is my favorite malt i've ever used and i i've yeah. i've Use German malts, English malts, Belgian malts, French malts, everything in between, Canadian, mostly Canadian American, and Carolina does an amazing job. Yeah. I, I'm tasting like a, <clears throat> and it's awesome, it's a savory thing, it's almost like a chivey thing that I get, and it's it's awesome. It's I mean, the it, hops. It's the, the hops, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this brings me, again, to, so are we still at the point, I know there's a couple people doing it on the East Coast, not very commercially successfully, but hops are still pretty much almost exclusive on the West Coast, is that right? Well, there's, as far as growing them, no, yeah. As far can, as growing them, you can them. get hops in North Carolina and Asheville, but like North Carolina uh, grown hops. Yeah, it's it's tough. And you know, um, NC State did a lot of uh, research, and we were there when I was with another company. Um, we were uh, uh, with them and and going through some of the trials. I got to know a lot of the people that work for State, and they were doing some really cool studies but one of the studies that came up and a lot of people from Virginia were coming down and you know we were in a lot of seminars and and drinking a lot of beer and talking about growing hops and the one thing that came with was you know I'm getting a a pound per plant here I'm getting three pounds per plant in the Asheville area because the weather's just better for it Mm. and in Idaho (laughs) they're getting six pounds per plant sure you just can't compete now If you pay a little bit more, you can get some locally grown hops, and they are good. There are some really, actually great hops grown in North Carolina. Just from a competition level, I've got to imagine it's kind of difficult. Yeah. Um, But there are some decent hops around here. Uh, There's some malt grown in North Carolina that's really good, too. Um, it's, the Carolina is not the only maltster, um, but I just, I love them. They're, They're really good. That was like the same argument for where I grew up, and some, to some extent, a lot of East Coast wine. Like, oh, it's, there's some good wine out here, you know, but 
the the properties are so closer together and the land is so much more expensive especially like out from where i'm from on long island that the wines are of good quality but compared to california wine you where you could pay half the price for it and you get the same quality so juice isn't sometimes that's That's exactly right yeah uh yeah because i've always was told that like wherever you could grow pot, you could grow hops because they're kind of in a similar, they similar are. growing uh, uh, same family. But we also have tons of uh, marijuana fields out here for CBD purposes. Lord yeah. knows I was there with Mr. Nick Sagan, former guest of the show of Flat River Infusions, on Harvest Day, which was insane to just be <laughs> in a, a six acre field of Crazy. just marijuana plants, but they were all 100% CBD, you know, yeah. they're all whatever. But just being there, you're like, what the heck? And you're seeing everybody just like, the, the reaper coming in, taking out all the plants oh, yeah. and chopping them, but uh, unique environment, but not not common. You know, like yeah, it, it would probably do best to just replace that with farmland or 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 you know put RTPs uh, next to pharmaceutical lab <laughs> right there to make more money for the land. We do want our farms to continue the yeah. yeah. So then you know a lot of the tobacco farmers were getting off of tobacco. So um, they did they they've done a lot of stuff in North Carolina, a lot of trials and. Um, we'll see what happens. You never know. But uh, yeah. right now, I don't know how cost-effective it is. Well, that'll just change the whole definition of making local, truly local beer, right? Yeah. Well, you can. Uh, you can, yeah. but it's, it would be a lot more expensive. Yeah, 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 you can even harvest yeast locally. I mean, you can get wild yeast here, too. So, And that's kind of fun also. But um, it's a lot of work. So, yeah. yeah. I imagine making beer in this new facility has got to be a nice uh, upgrade. No offense to the old uh, boiling location. It's a little different. Wild's got a, a little <laughs> tiny old school brewery. I mean, it chugs along and makes some decent you beer. You can but, make good beer on it. Yeah. yeah but, and, and they were told you couldn't. And then I got there. I was like, well, they shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd like to meet who said that. Uh, but um, we got there. That's an old system. I actually used an old system like that at a brew pub that I was at. I didn't really brew at it. I just kind of oversaw production there. But um, we made good beer there. We made, I think, great beer at Y Hill. Very proud of what we did there. Uh, I just had some of Greg's beers. They are excellent. Um, so he's still making really good beer there. Um, but I have a really nice brew system. Um, <laughs> yeah. Chris knows a little bit about production, uh, a lot about efficiency. And he looked at me when we were uh, parsing the system together. And and he's like, uh, why don't you want the, because I was just going fully manual. He goes, why don't you want automation? I was like, I don't want to spend all that money. And he goes, let's think about how much time it'll save you and what the right. cost yeah. is on that. And we started breaking things down. I have a pretty automated system now that is really nice. It so, makes really good beer. Yeah. So what's the size of this? Like what's the? Seven barrel. Same thing. Seven barrel system. I love seven to 10 barrels. Yeah. This is my dream job. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I've run big breweries. Um, all along the East Coast. I'm very proud of where I was at. I, I like the production aspect of it. Um, but if, you know, what do you want to do? You want to serve people, be with them, see them, eating and drinking with them. You're immersed in the whole situation. It, 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 this is what it's all about. I can make whatever I want. I can buy any ingredient I want because I'm selling everything by the pint right now. Um, and it. this is exactly what you want to do. Yeah. If you're a brewer, this is what you want. Yeah. It's like a, it, 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 in a kind of romantic way of looking at it, it is more of a European way of life, of thinking. You bet. I say this, you know, I've said this maybe before on the podcast, but my wife and I were in Spain on our honeymoon, and we were right on the on the water. We were in a Cadiz, uh, Cadiz and we we're having uh, bocadillos, little sandwiches, right? But we bought them a block away from the ocean. Uh, right on the ocean, right, like looking at the water, there was a guy that just was si- uh, selling sliced Ham on, you know, just like really great Iberico. It sounds ham. great. It was amazing, but it was like, it was just the ham. And if you wanted to get, you know, like some bread and some cheese with, to go with that ham, you had to walk a block up to the other side. <laughs> and the, the guy overhears me just as like a restaurant guy. And I'm telling my wife, I go, you know, if this guy just made, if he just bought some bread and just bought some cheese, he could have all these bocadillos right here on the corner. You'd have no reason to walk up there. The guy overheard him and goes, but we're not doing that because this is what I do. And I went, oh, uh, I, I mean, no disrespect. <laughs> He's like, you Americans, you just figure like, uh, I can, like, let's just do whatever we can to make whatever at a dollar and this and that. And I looked at him, I'm like, yeah, but what's wrong with that? And he's like, because that's what this guy does. And I go, yeah, but there are a lot of guys in our industry that do something well, but don't understand the full 
idea of it until someone else figures it out like this is how to do it best and he's like yeah but that's not what we do i sell <laughs> i sell ham and i mean there's an argument for both sides right but i do I like agree. the idea that like even at norse even if this is this is it let's just say this is everything you'll ever do with the brewery you are making your own beer you're making your own food. You're providing an environment for many people to come in and enjoy and sit there for lunch and dinner for seven hours <laughs> and just and just do that. And Brad's working in a brewery where he's all, uh, something he's always wanted to do, and he's he's got like a sense of accomplishment in doing that. I think uh, the American way is always like, yeah, but what's next? What's next? What do we do next? But there is some comfort in saying, no, this is is what's next is this life what we're doing and how we're doing it it's right also now. comfortable to set a base and then that, that base is sustainable yeah. um we do want to grow if you're not growing not, you're dying yeah, you gotta enjoy process. it yeah why do it yeah especially yeah. what we do yeah well i will tell you if you do want to grow and get in distribution our friends at Triangle Wine Co. are opening up a shop in North Raleigh in the Bedford area, which I'm not sure about the mile radius to where you are in Wake Forest, but it's certainly a lot it's closer. Close. Yeah. So maybe we could talk with Chris and get some uh, Norse Brewing Company beers into Triangle Wine Company, which, by the way, is a sponsor of the show and a great friend of the show. <laughs> and a great company. <laughs> and a great company. Yeah. And they have a great selection of beers, a great selection of wine, vermouths. A lot of your beverage needs you can get there because they will deliver wine or beer to to your house, or you can get a curbside delivery. They're putting uh, you know COVID packages together, meaning you give them a hundred bucks, tell them what kind of wines you drink, and they'll put it together for you and bring it out to your car, and voila. Um, and they do also sell. Proof alcohol proof ice al cream. Yeah, think differently about your dessert. Get proof alcohol ice cream with 7% ABV in every single pint. You can get flavors like bourbon caramel, coconut rum, apple pie, <laughs> moonshine, uh, and many others. Uh, they are at all of the Triangle Wine Companies, but if you yourself are not in a convenient area where Triangle Wine Companies are located, you can also probably go down to a place that is more saturated in the area, like a Harris Teeter or a Lowe's shopping center, and you can find that beautiful red freezer in the uh, beverage aisle of your uh, supermarket and get proof alcohol ice cream there. So, got so proof lastly, in the freezer. I'm we've got this last beer in front of us. Uh, explain this one before we uh, before we uh, close it and make it a day. So we want we've we've run through our European and American choices, our American style IPA. Now we're in a. Um, Kind of a Southern England brown ale. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I first learned to make when I first started brewing. Had an English brewmaster um, and had some really nice recipes. And this is a beer that I really latched on to. I made this in North Carolina when I first got here. It's still a big seller. It's still keeping a brewery I was with in business. And um, I've improved upon what what I've learned and, and the malts that I can use. And it's a little bit bigger. And I just love this style of beer. This is a dark ale that you can drink year-round. It's caramely, it's chocolatey, it, it's got some nut flavor to it, and it is just a great beer. Um, a, a great yeah. beer style. I'm not saying I'm, I'm in a great beer, but uh, I love this beer, and it cooks well. So when we're braising uh, shoulders and we're doing some other things or we're cooking down some short ribs, we use this a lot. So nice. because it just, it's not bitter, you know, it's got those caramely flavors, um, those exploded proteins. I, I love this, this beer. I was going to say, my reference for this beer, and sorry if this is an insult, it'll just show my naivety when it comes to beer, but this is like, style-wise, I think of Newcastle Brown Ale. And you should. Yeah, okay. But this but this is like a lot softer and more elegant style of it, like you were saying. I appreciate so, it. Yeah, it's a bigger beer, too, but um, we give it like time. Like alcohol-wise, it's it bigger? It is. It's 6.5%. No. Okay. Um, but to get that malt flavor that I wanted, I'm not, I, I don't, you know, I'm one of those guys. I don't care about IBUs. I do not care about alcohol percentage. I think my customers should know so they can make informed decisions. But I'm more about making beer and getting a, a flavor that I'm looking for. And it just so happens I needed that 
amount of malt to get these flavors that I really like through a lot of trial and error. I've been making beers like this for a long, long time. So, and I just like this is that balanced beer, mm-hmm. balance between malt totally. and hops, and it's just drinkable. I love drinkable beers that you can have a couple of. Yeah. Well, and uh, you know, it took Brad a little while to get to this one. So, um, because <laughs> during during the uh, COVID shutdown, we were able to, you know, silver lining. We got to find it in, in everything in life, right? So, we uh, we spent the time actually brewing and get caught up and get all our tanks filled, and then he made fat thor which is our stout and um with a ph by the way um <laughs> nice so uh he comes into me he goes i really wanted to make the the brown ale and i go and go why didn't you he goes well i used all the chocolate chips chocolate malt oh chocolate malt i'm sorry That's yeah good. and then he threw everything in the, in fat thor <laughs> fat thor is great it's good beer uh you can even drink a stout in summertime it's nice and 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 Actually light but very dark and, and and tasteful, and like well let's buy some more so we can get it. So he, he finally got around to buying some more and and made. I love this beer. That guy's beer, that's the guy. Oh right? man, it's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Brad's always had a uh, a group of uh, loyalists to your beer that were you know that would come over at Waiho on Boylan before that. But it's true. What I remember Good most people. people going and fawning over more than anything were your darker lagers and your. Yeah, your kind of classic, uh, kind of European style. So it all just makes sense that this is where you have positioned yourself and where you're at. I like that you're making what you want to make. And Chris, I love that you were able to bring what you grew up with to us. You know, it's it's bringing culture to the area. And we need more of this in general. It's like you, we need to hear and see the expressions of what people have understood and loved for so many times in their neck of the woods, wherever yeah. it may be. So that's a really awesome connection. And that's great that you were able to open and do this for us and in our community. And, uh, and also, uh, like your native country rising, which is good for my business, the uh, per capita alcohol consumption, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> I think well, Denmark is the highest per capita consumption in the world or up the top five. Really? We, yeah, we, we, we got to be good at something. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I would lay a bet on that. No, this guy. Right also, well, when, when it's dark in the winter time for like 16, 18 hours a day with well, yeah, like right? when, when we lived over there, Jenny would get up in the morning at like eight o'clock. It was dark. Right, she would ride her bike to school, and it was still dark. And she would get in the classroom, sun starts coming up. By the time she leaves at 3, sun's down, it's dark. She's like, what the heck happened? It's depressing. And she's, and she's from California, right? Yeah. It's oh. like sunshine all the time. <laughs> and it's like rain, you know, wind, uphill both ways, of course, right? Snow, yeah. and it's, it's just, <laughs> yeah. But the opposite, in the summertime, you have like 18 oh, yeah. to then, 20 then, hours a yeah, day. The long is crazy. And the sun never goes down, right? So, yes. Alcohol is a big part of uh, of our life in Denmark. Yeah, and it's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys for bringing it, like Max said, to uh, North Carolina. And uh, for those of you out there, head over to Wake Forest and get some Norse Brewing Company beers. If you go there, you will eat and drink very merrily. Thanks for listening to the NC F&B Podcast. And if you've stuck with us this long, review us on iTunes and remember, five stars are encouraged.